Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Inland Devo 30. I'm Pastor Ruben. Thank you for joining us today. We stream live on Facebook every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If you're in the neighborhood, come on by and join us at 5383 Martin Street here in Harupa Valley. Love to see you here. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Ben. Good to see you, brother. And congratulations on your marriage. We will be in Philippians chapter four, chapter four. Hey, if you're looking for peace, this is the chapter to find peace. Let's go ahead and pray and then we'll get into, uh, into the word. Gracious Father, we come before you this Wednesday morning, Lord, as uh, they call it the midweek hump, Lord. And we just pray, Father, that as we gather together this morning, Lord, that you would minister to us and prepare our hearts as we go out there in the world today, Lord. We need your strength and we need peace, Lord. This chapter deals with peace, Father. And it's a peace that surpasses all understanding, Father. And Lord, it's a peace that we can't obtain in our own flesh, Father, but it's a peace that comes from God. And we need to remind you, Lord, we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we need the peace that comes from you to just overcome us and, and to fill us so that we can get through the trials and the struggles that each one of us are going through. And so, Lord, would you give us peace this morning, Father? Now, there are certain peace, Lord, as you know. Peace in our relationships, peace with others, peace with God, <coughs> peace in the world. And so there are various pieces so that we can deal with these issues, Father. And so we're praying again, Lord. We're just looking to you to give us that peace, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so turn your Bibles to uh, Philippians chapter 4. And as I said, this chapter deals with peace. And if you're looking for peace, this is the chapter to go to. <clears throat> now, as I said in my prayer, that peace we can't obtain ourselves. It has to be from God. God has to intervene, and he intervenes when we humble ourselves and we pray to him and seek him with our whole heart, and then he gives us that peace, uh, that comfort that we need to get through whatever trial it is that we are going through. So Paul now is, is pretty much finishing up the whole, whole uh, book here of Philippians, or letter, and he says, Therefore, my beloved and longed-for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. Uh, Paul loved those that he wrote to, the Philippians, the Corinthians, the Galatians. Uh, he, this guy had a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ that he invested in um, deeply. <clears throat> I mean, you have created relationships with them, right? And so he's like, I long for you guys. I don't know, we all from time to time have called somebody a best friend, you know? You're my best friend. What, what does that mean when I say you're my best friend? Uh, when I say that to someone, it's because they've been there for you through thick and thin. Uh, they didn't ask you for anything. They didn't want anything. Uh, they were just there. And you spent time with them. You associated with them. You prayed with them, you read the word with them, you talked about life situations with them. It's a deep, intimate relationship. And, and those friendships sometimes are destroyed over the dumbest things. And that's sad. Uh, friendships are needed, and we need that deep uh, relationship with one another. Um, as a pastor, you have to have that towards your flock. You have to have that towards people that are in your church. If you don't have that love for them, then then why are you there, you know? Why are you helping? And it hurts when people leave. It hurts when they leave in bad situations uh, because you know that the potential was there. And there was so much hope and you can't invest anymore in them. So Paul understood all that because he had this deep relationship with the Philippians and many others. Uh, something that we should all really think about as, uh, as we, you know, fellowship with one another. You know, how we approach one another uh, how we treat one another and so forth. That's something that's, that should be done and, and you know, done with some effort. I'm purposely going to think about this. You know, how do I treat people? And are they my friend? Uh, do I give? Do I support? Do I help? 
you know, or am I always taking, 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 taking? You know, am I more of a burden than a friend? And now there are times when we're burdens to each other, and that's good. That's what friends do. But take an inventory of those things. He goes on and says, I implore Yuda, uh, Yuda, and I implore Saitaichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companions, help these women who labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of the fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. There's the book of life. And so these names are in the book of life. Uh, Paul's name is in the book of life. And these are people that are serving uh, with the Apostle Paul, and they're listed in the book of life. So if you are sincere about your love for God and you are serving, then chances are your name is in the book of life. It's written there. Uh, it's a book that you, uh, you want to be written in. Amen. And you notice the unity of this friendship, right? They're all in unity, laboring together, helping one another, and not being a burden so much. And he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. So that's on the forefront of, of Paul's mind that as believers, we ought to be rejoicing um, at all times. Even though it might be difficult, uh, we need to rejoice. Now, you might not rejoice over the situation, but you can rejoice that we have salvation. So fall back on that. There are times when you're going through things and as you're going through them, it's not very uh, fun to go through those things. So what I try to do is I try to rejoice and have joy and peace on the thing that I do know. Chuck would always say, look, if there's stuff you don't know, then fall back on what you do know. And that is God loves you, that you're a child of God, that you're going to heaven. So no matter what situation you're going through, remind yourself of those things, right? So even when you're struggling, say, I know this, God, you love me, and I'm your child, so I'm gonna find that joy right there in that alone, even if that's the only joy I can find, and I can rejoice in the fact that my name's written in the book of life, and that one day this will all be over. There's, there's rejoicing in that, even if there's no rejoicing in anything else. So I urge you, true companions, Joys, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Now that's interesting statement there. Uh, there's two periods. I'd like to read that in the Greek. I wish I had it with me now and we had the time, but he's basically saying here, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Now, if the Lord is at hand, uh, what he is saying is, uh, don't worry, the, the word gentleness there means graciousness. So it's not necessarily being gentle, it's just having favor with people. Uh, being kind, being generous, being helpful. You know, so stay busy serving others because the Lord's at hand. He's coming soon is what he's saying here. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to who? to God. So be anxious for nothing or worry. Uh, that word means worry or be troubled with cares. So we're not to worry. We're not to be troubled with cares. Uh, but if we're honest with ourselves, we are worried. <laughs> and we are troubled with cares. And I think that's why he says, uh, but in everything by prayer and supplication. So we need to pray to the Lord and ask him to help us to not worry, to be troubled with these cares and then just lay them before him. Um, I think that when we pray, we should be very descriptive in what we're struggling with. And just letting the Lord know, this is what I'm struggling with, Lord. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And be very clear. And then as you're praying that, you'll notice that the Lord begins to work on you. But Lord, I also need A, B, C. And I get that, Lord. And I need you to fill me. And I need you to help me, Lord, with this situation. And God begins to work in your heart when you begin to pray over these situations. And then he'll give you that thanksgiving um, as you're letting your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. The word guard there is talking about a, a, a um, garrison of 
men, so a, a whole legion of men, guarding your heart as though they were guarding your heart from the things that are going on, and that the peace of God, which, which surpasses understanding. So what that means there is that we don't understand that peace. It just comes upon you. Now, if that is true, then we need to seek that peace. And when that peace comes on us, it's a peace that comes from God and not one that we create. And that's important to understand. So we really need to be more on our faces, praying to God and asking him to give us the peace because we can't give the peace to ourselves. Our peace is kind of strange in that when we're going through something, when we're, when we're hoping for peace, what we're really saying is, Lord, give me peace by taking that away. <laughs> You know, or taking them away. And then I'll have peace, you know, once you deal with them or deal with that. And then the peace will come. And God is saying, no, I'll give you a peace while you're going through it. Just kind of like the picture of this whole storm, right? And the disciples are in the boat and the storm is uh, roaring. The sea is bouncing and they're looking around and there's no peace there. And they're in the midst of their trial. And all of a sudden they look out and they see Jesus walking on water. Like, is that Jesus, you know? And he comes up to the boat. He didn't pass the boat. He came up right to the boat. It was Jesus coming to them. They didn't go to Jesus. Jesus came to them. And then he said to them, Peter, come out. And Peter actually went out and stepped on the water. And then he lacked faith and began to sink. But we see that Jesus came out and gave them the peace. And then he told the storm, be calm. And it calmed. So we have to seek the peace of God in our lives, not our own peace. The disciples could have tried to, you know, create their own peace, but there was a storm going on, and they couldn't create their own peace. They could go, we just trust in God, or we just need to stop getting splashed by water. We need to go into the bow. We need to do this. We need to huddle up together, but they're still worried and concerned. It wasn't until Jesus came into the scene. So we have to pray for Jesus to come into the scene of our lives as we're headed in the storms of life. Verse 8, finally, brother, and this is another way of getting the peace, right? Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And I think the key word here is meditate on these things. Find out what it is that you can meditate in a positive way. Whatever things are true, you know, your word is true, Lord. You're true, Lord, to your word. Uh, you are faithful. You are good. You died on the cross. <laughs> Meditate on those things as you're going through the trials, and God will give you that peace. Meditate on those things which are noble or worthy of uh, respect, in a sense, is what that means. Worthy of respect. Uh, find those things that you can respect. You can respect one another. You can respect the work that's going on here, the work that someone is doing, and, and recognize that, and there will be peace upon your life. I think that as a, as a point, as a pastor, I can have peace of various ministries when I respect that that person knows what they're doing. Does that make sense? Because <laughs> you can trust them, and they're doing their job what God's called them. And they're not making a whole lot of mistakes. I'm not saying they won't make mistakes, but they're going forward. When they make mistakes, they get up and they just continue to go forward. And so you can respect that and you have a peace that's there compared to someone else where you're always involved, always trying to figure out how, how you can get them to do something or get them to do that or move this way or that way. And so now there's no peace there because they haven't gotten it yet. And so when you can respect those that are doing their job, there's peace there. So finding those th places of respect, that person is, is, is a person of respect. I can respect them and there's a peace there. I can respect the worship. I can respect the servants. I can respect what's going on. I can respect the work of God in our lives. Uh, those are good things to respect and there's a peace that, that goes with that. And so finding you know, the examples through all of these things, what are noble, what whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good reports. You know, meditate on all of those things, not on the negative stuff. Try to take your mind away from that stuff. It happens, but don't meditate too long on it. Deal with it, change it. Uh, 
confront it, but then move on from that and meditate on the good things. Uh, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these things do. And God and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regards to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer needs. I can do all things through who? Christ who strengthens me. That's the context, by the way. People pull this out of context, right? And they, they always use this scripture here, uh, 413. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. You know, they're climbing a mountain. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. They're, you know, they're, whatever it is, they're speaking. I can do all. No, it's talking about, if we read the context here, you know, he's talking about the circumstances that are happening in his life a base and abounding and so forth. And it all can be done and handled through Christ Jesus. Again, we're not in control. So if you don't have, somehow you have to figure out by focusing on God, how God's gonna use this for his glory. And you stay focused on the positive aspect of having nothing. If you have a lot, then focus on the fact that you have more now that you're able to give more to those that have a need. Uh, that you're able to use it and you don't have to think about it. And again, it's through Christ Jesus. All this is through Christ Jesus. It's not our work. It's all his work. And we have to believe that. Nevertheless, you have done well that you share in my distress. Uh, the Philippians also were reciprocal to Paul's love uh, for them. And so they were in dire strait to help him out. Uh, with his needs uh, because they loved him. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Uh, that's an aspect of the ministry is people supporting the work that uh, the leadership is doing. Here the Apostle Paul has doing a great work and they knew, the Philippians knew that other churches weren't supporting Paul whether they could support him or not, or whether they just decided not to. We don't know all the details, but they didn't support him. It was a Philippian church that supported Paul in his work, and they gave generously to Paul in the ministry that he was doing. Uh, I love when that happens because then you know people are thinking spiritually when they support a work. Uh, when I go to missions, uh, a lot of the missions that I go to is not because the church has the funds set aside. A lot of the missions that I go to is because the people, the person, decide to support me to go. Most of my support comes from people that don't go to this church, but had come to this church in times past that love this church and don't come because they have moved away. So my mission trips are usually supported by people that live in, in other states. That's where it comes. And I can actually go to them and say, look, I'm planning on, on going to a mission trip, so I need your prayer first and foremost and let you know to pray with me as the Lord leads. And if you can support, then fine. And usually they, they support. And I don't ask, you know, in the, in the sense to take advantage of them, but I know that uh, they have hearts for the Lord and for the lost, and, and they help. And so um, it's always neat to see people like that because you know their priorities. It's, they're not consumed on their themselves, but on the work of the Lord. And that's what Paul is commending them uh, as they were giving to him to share in, in their wealth. And, and he goes on in verse 16, for even in Thessalonica you sent aid once and again for my necessities. For not, so not just for the trip, but even just for his personal necessities, the daily things that, that he needed. And you can only imagine this, whatever he needed. He needed gel for his hair. I don't know. Uh, combs and clothing, you know, uh, some change, you know, I guess to eat if he could eat at this place or that place. So just the basic general needs. And again, that has happened in, in my case where 
those that support me, it meets the necessities too. You know, I'm able to, I, I think my first trip to South Sudan was probably my most expensive one, even though it was $3,500 to go, which is not bad at all. Um, but I ended up paying, I think almost five <clears throat> for it because I spent a couple of thousand on necessities. Like I didn't have a suitcase, <laughs> you know, uh, to go over there because I never traveled. So I had to buy a suitcase. You know, I had to buy uh, little converters for electrical sockets. Um, I had to get, you know, mosquito repellent. Uh, just things that you don't realize. I got, I went out and got a special shirt that was dry fit because I needed to be hum humid over there. So a long sleeve so that the mosquitoes couldn't bite my, my arms, just my hands. And I did get a couple of bites on my hands alone. And then I used this special mosquito repellent that you spray on clothes and it stays in the clothes for seven days, even if you wash them every day. This repellent stays there, so it does work. It actually kept them off of me quite a bit. I'd find one, but that's about it. Uh, so I bought special shoes, I bought pants, you know, and things that I felt like, you know, I'm going for my first time over here, I'm not sure exactly what I'll need, but um, I'm getting it, and so forth, and I bought other stuff, so, so just for the necessities too. Now, when I go to India, I don't really need much. Now, in fact, on my second trip, I realized I don't even need a suitcase. I, I almost practically just, I did take a suitcase, but it was pretty much empty, you know, because I know what I can live off now. And I know that my, the clothes that I take, just take two pairs, they wash one, and I just exchange it, and, and so forth. It comes with the, the place that I stayed. It's laundry for free. So I just figured that out. So you learn. And you adjust, but even the necessities were paid for. And again, the, the heart to take care of them and, and to take care of the man too. It wasn't just like we're going to reach out the gospel there, and that's important, but also we want to make sure you're taken care of too, Pastor, you know, as you go out or mission, missionary, as you go out. So the necessities were taken care of. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. And that's important, right? Because as my friends, as they give uh, and care, they get, they get the fruit for that. They're gonna be rewarded in heaven. Uh, God is gonna bless them because of that. And, and so I don't have a big problem asking, you know, as, as long as I'm asking in the right way, in the right heart, because I know that they're gonna be blessed by it too. And Paul knew that because he wasn't just seeking it from them, but because it would be a blessing to their own benefit. Indeed, I have all and abound and am full, having received from Aphrodite the things which were sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And that's his way of saying it was good, <laughs> what you did and, and how you supported me. And, may, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches, in glory by Christ Jesus. So as you give, then my God will give to you and he'll supply your needs. That's a principle that we see in Malachi, right? Okay. That's, that's whole Malachi principle right there. No, don't tell me that we, we don't live by the Old Testament and that we shouldn't follow the principles in the Old Testament because it's also in the New Testament. Because he's basically saying here, look, if you give, watch how I'll give back to you. I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour it out upon you. That's what he said in Malachi. Test me, try me, see if it's true. And Paul is just building upon that, that same principle there in Malachi. He's quoting from Malachi in, in a sense there. Look, if you, if you supply my necessities and my needs and, 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 and the gospel's of furtherance, then wow, my God shall supply all your needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, right? He'll take care of you too. So there's that principle. So we, when we give and support a church, we can be assured that God's gonna take care of us. He's gonna take care of us. And there's a peace there. Let's close up. Now to our God the Father be glory forever and ever, amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household. Ah, interesting. Paul is in prison, and apparently some of Caesar's household were saved there. And so Paul is saying, these brethren here that were received Christ into their hearts also greet you. Uh, they were appreciative of what they were doing. Uh, and so you see the gospel being preached right where Paul is at. And, and isn't that what Jesus said, right? Go to the world and make disciples of men, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So even while Paul was in prison, he was making disciples of men. And these men now are greeting uh, the church of Philippi. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. What a great chapter. You should read it again. It doesn't take long. But it helps us to understand that the peace that we're seeking really is the peace of God. And it comes through prayer and seeking Him and meditating on specific things that are edifying, that are good. And when we do that, God will take care of the rest. So I, I hope that that's something that, uh, that God will do for us today. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your precious word. I'm not saying that it's easy, Lord. Uh, we have to seek you, Lord. We have to meditate upon you, Lord. And we have to let go of those negative thoughts, Father, Amen. and just give them to you, Father, and trust that you'll take care of them, Lord. And that is difficult at times, Father. May you help us. And Lord, may you give us the peace that comes from you, Lord. And that, Lord, when we get it, we'll know that it surpasses all of our understanding. And so we know that it comes from you, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray for all these things, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us. Appreciate that. Um, please share this on your wall. You never know who's watching. And in fact, I just thought of it thought of it right now maybe next time on friday when we gather together and even here uh, we can do a watch party so as you're watching me on your on your phone just hit the watch party and it will go out there and we'll get more people watching at the same time so pray about that that'll be something that's good uh, to do so god bless you have a wonderful day if you have any prayer requests please post them and we'll pray for you here or private message me god bless you